In my past article, I addressed the issue, the relationship between the Liberal Party of Canada and the communist regime of China. I demystified Justin Trudeau one of his most notorious pro-China speech in the past. There is a flexibility that I know Stephen Harper must dream about of having a dictatorship that he could do everything he wanted. Uh, that I find quite interesting. I also talk about the issue of media bias, especially those from right wing and extreme right wing. This time I want to talk something pragmatic, trade and immigration. They are pretty essential for Canada and Canadian society. Justin Trudeau may hate communist China a lot, but there are two things he cannot ignore. First of all, the pro-China faction in the Liberal Party is pretty strong. In fact, mainland Chinese community given them a lot of votes so that they won the election in October. The mainland Chinese also have a pretty huge chapbook, and for at least a short period of time, essential on supporting Canadian economy. Immigration is a backbone for Canada. In fact, Canada is a society consists of immigrants, except the indigenous people, we are all immigrants. Immigrants offer a source of labor. It is pretty important for a society like us, which is getting older and older. They also offer us a source of taxation that support our pensions, Medicare, and lots of other benefits. That is why the former conservative government under Stephen Harper, no matter how much they express their dislike on China's human rights records, went there twice to strengthen the trade. China has been witness to the greatest surge in general prosperity in the history of mankind. More than 400 million people have been lifted out of poverty. That is also why Liberal let in mainland Chinese Canada in GTA area, but they, except local born Arnold Chen, who is the deputy house leader, are not let into important posts in the Liberal caucus. Like some reports said, immigrants do give us inconvenience. Like some say Chinese make the realty price higher than they should be especially in Toronto and Vancouver. Also, they do something we really don't like, like honor killing, bad hygiene, anything like that. But they are not hard to solve. We can put up laws and rules and regulation and strongly enforcing them. We can also educate them and tell them not to do that again. But absolutely, stopping immigrants to enter Canada is not the solution. Multiculturalism is a, a basic vision for Canada, but we can't talk about it. It's out of the topic today. Trade is important, and China is a huge trade partner. We got to have a good relationship with China, but we must take caution. First of all, hold a stand, especially on human rights. Anastasia Lin can attend Miss World Final just because she's a Falun Gong practitioner, and government of Canada have no reaction at all. This is a big failure. Also beware of China. They are not to be trusted. Just look at Hong Kong. China can't keep promise on the treaty they signed. This is a big warning. Also beware of some Chinese Canadians' loyalty lines. They may have a close relationship with communist China for the benefit of Canada. They may concern a lot about Hong Kong, but you never guarantee their loyalty really lies with Canada. Communist China has a big checkbook. They need lots of oil and mineral resources from us, and we need lots of goods from them. But we always have to beware when we trade with them. They're like gangsters, so they can't be trusted.